Is the ambassador right? Has policy radically shifted? I want to go right now to former Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown, Democratic strategist Jeremy Ring, and political commentator Amy Holmes. Good to see all of you guys. Senator Brown, first Thanks. over to you. Um, is this a departure? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, Israel is our greatest ally in that region. I've been there. I've seen the, the settlement proposals. I've seen the wall. I've been all throughout Israel. And, uh, you know, they're basically uh, uh, fighting to survive. You have uh, the Palestinians who basically will not recognize their right to exist. And the fact that the president, uh, through John Kerry, it's kind of a last hurrah. I've never seen them so fired up when it comes to foreign policy. They spent more <laughs> time working on the Iran deal and, and, and Cuba than they well, did know, with these guys. I mean, it's, it's amazing. they got to compete with all those job announcements uh, Trump keeps coming up with. Uh, Amy Holmes, <laughs> one of the things that John Kerry said in his big speech, and it was a big speech, a very fiery speech, was he said, look, Israel has always been our friend, and as our friend, is it is our duty to tell them when they're basically wrong, and they're wrong on this one. In other words, he's saying, Israel, it's your fault that you have the issues and the tensions you have. Uh, if Israel is our friend and has been our friend, uh, why why are we suddenly turning our back on them now? Well, that's exactly right. And John Kerry can say that this is a hard truth, but he's actually not uh, the arbiter of what is true in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And as the Israelis say, they don't need uh, foreign leaders to be telling them about their own national security interests. Uh, I would go back to what Senator Brown said. I, too, have been to Israel. I've toured it extensively. And, uh, you know, this is a country that has enemies on all sides. And in the West Bank, the Palestinians, they have vowed that there will not be a single Jew left in that region should they have this two-state solution. I think uh, the other point that is absolutely correct is that this is a radical departure from uh, our foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Israel and the settlement issue. And this was with only three weeks to go left on this presidency and a new president coming in who's going to have a very different approach. Yeah, it, it's certainly making it more challenging, though, for the new president that's about to come in. Jeremy Ring, why did they wait until now? I mean, we have certainly had some indications that the Obama administration has felt a lot of these tensions and, and felt as though they wanted to say a lot of these things earlier on, but they waited until the, the final moments. Well, there's a few things, Trish. Thank you. Uh, first, they've hinted at this. They had a 2011 draft resolution uh, that they um, uh, that they voted against. But that being said, I think it's disingenuous to say that this is a different strategy. They continue to keep their two straight two state strategy. This is the first time that President Obama and his administration have voted against uh, a UN resolution for Israel. And all you have to do is look back and say that Reagan, Ronald Reagan, for example, voted 21 times against a UN resolution condemning uh, Israel, including once. Mm, the when world has Israel changed since then. No, the world has changed. And in fact, the, wor uh, we the, the world has changed, but this is still the, the first time. This is the first time. No, we abstain. Tr true. This is the first time in Obama's administration. If you were to look back since 1967, you have five Republican presidents who have voted uh, against. Uh, resolutions that condemned Israel 53 times versus Democratic presidents who voted against resolutions condemning Israel 25 times. And now we have an administration who abstained from voting against resolutions. That is why it's a departure. And I would also point out that the administration didn't even try to get support uh, among congressmen and senators. And Senator Chuck Schumer from here in New York, he's the minority leader in the Senate, he's come out very strongly against this. And he points out oh. it's actually going to make it more difficult for a two state st solution to actually uh, happen. You know, look, look, I mean, the Democratic Party certainly just continues to alienate people here. We talked about how they alienated blue collar workers, a lot of Jewish. Americans feeling like they've been deserted by President Obama. Anyway, go ahead, Senator Brown. What is it? Uh, listen, it doesn't matter what happened back in 1967 or back in 2000 and whatever. It happens what the United States did the other day when they abstained and, and basically you know, mo allowed this to move forward. It's abhorrent. If you go to Starot, for example, and you see the rockets and missiles that have been lobbed at child care facilities that are basically underground in bunkers, and then you look at the fact that the Palestinians, when they, in fact, when the Israelis actually halted uh, making settlement uh, building buildups, uh, they still didn't come to the table. They're playing the, the what the Iranians did, you know, the whole dog and pony show, trying to get any leverage that they can. And I think okay. what this president has done is wrong because he's put in a tremendous roadblocks, right. not only with the Russians, but now with this issue. It's, well, it's just unacceptable. It, yeah, so, so, a lot so of people feel that way. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. i got to leave it there. But thank you so much to all of you for being here. Thank Very you. interesting. Thank you, Trish. And uh, heated conversation.